Hey folks, Scott Weingart here, and this is the MCRIT Podcast. Sorry for the delay, and sorry for the brevity, but I think it's worth it, because uh, this is an important episode. Uh, I've just been under crunch time for a lot of projects coming up, things like Recess TO and other amazing stuff. I am giving the closing keynote at the Emergency Nursing Association, or the ENA, uh, which is going to be amazing. So if there's any nurses that like MCRIT and you're going to be there, please come and say hello. I want to meet you. Okay, let's get right into it. Uh, you know, one of my obsessions is surgical airway and teaching surgical airway and getting everyone to the point where when you finally have to do the one you're going to do in your career, just based on statistics, uh, you are ready, you are prepped, you are mentally there. The way to make that happen is to practice. If you were a completionist viewer of the MCRIT site, you saw I used to recommend using vent tubing and uh, some rolls of tape, and it was pretty good. I, I, I honestly could tell you, if you did that and you practiced that religiously, uh, you would be ready to do a crike. But then my friend Laura Duggan came around and she uh, took some open access anatomical images and she made a 3D printed crike that could be either wearable so you could practice on each other or it works just fine for tabletop and she optimized it and then she released those plans for free and that was published on the MCRIT site and that was a game changer because now all of a sudden you have something that is totally reusable, totally ready for you. You don't have to get prepped. You don't have to steal ventilator tubing. Uh, it just sits there. Um, but people have been asking, well, how do I go about using that? And that's what this video is all about. I'll show you. It also gives, I think, the best images or best video, rather, of the actual technique I recommend. And uh, I think it'll be good. Now, if you're like my buddy, Sarah Gray, you will actually put on your calendar a set appointment to practice crike each month. And that's what she does. And that's why she's so fantastic because she has that mindset. You should have that mindset. This is a life-saving procedure. So each month you put on your calendar, uh, practice crike, and you do two or three of these with your model and the simple supplies you will see in this video that require no purchases uh, beyond a, a roll of tape. Um, and uh, you will be, I think, in a very good mental place to perform this procedure if you ever need to. So I think that's enough of uh, the intro. Let's get right to the video. All right, folks, I'm gonna take you through how to use this 3D printed crike model uh, to practice crikes uh, at least once a month to lock in the skills. Now, here is the model, and if you don't know where this is, just go to the show notes for this Wii and you'll find Laura Duggan's amazing free model. And then uh, the next thing you want is gaffer tape. Now, if you buy one roll of this off of Amazon or wherever you can, um, this will probably last you through, uh, I don't know, two decades of practice. But this is three-inch roll of gaffer's tape. And the magic of gaffer's tape, it looks like duct tape, but the point is the adhesive used on this tape uh, leaves no residue. So it's super easy to use. You'll find a billion uses for it uh, in all parts of your life. But just uh, make a membrane from a piece of the gather tape. And that'll be your cricothyroid membrane. And then you could save this other piece uh, to secure the next set of things. Now, you want some soft tissue on there, so uh, grab some four by fours and take as many of these as you want to simulate the soft tissue anatomy of your patient. Just lay them on. Now, you don't need to tape these down. You could just leave it as is, I think is a little bit easier to just throw some tape on. Uh, it kind of locks the soft tissue down. So we will now tape at the bottom and at the top. And now we have a nice firm model with soft tissue on it. Last thing you need is a plastic bag. Uh, the specimen bags, of course we wouldn't steal this from the actual hospital, but the specimen bags that uh, you might or might not have at your hospital or any kind of plastic bag is fine. We'll simulate your skin quite nicely and you just put it in there and fold it on up. And now you could tape this. I don't even find it necessary to tape. And now what you have is a head here, patient's rest of the body here, and you have a very nice uh, simulated cricothyroid. So now what do you need to actually do the procedure? Well, you need a scalpel. 11 blade here, but it doesn't matter. It could be 11 or a 10 or a 12 or a stitch cutter. I don't care. A bougie. There you go. And either an ET tube or a trach 
appliance, whichever one you want to use for the individual procedure you're doing each month. Okay, so now let's go through the procedure. Uh, you've had a can intubate, can oxygenate. Someone's still working on the head of the bed. Uh, you're going to go into the sternal notch over here, palpate, palpate, and then start working your way up. And if you could feel cricoid, membrane, thyroid, great. Um, if you can't, you're going to practice making a big cut, and you could decide which way you want to practice. In this case, I can feel anatomy, cricoid, thyroid. So now I'm going to put my non-dominant hand, thumb, and middle finger locked to the broad portion of the thyroid with that same index finger. I could repalpate. I know exactly where I'm going. Now, I'm going to get the scalpel in my dominant hand. My hand is stabilized on the patient in both cases. And what I'm going to do now, and what is different than my previous iterations of describing this technique, is anytime the scalpel is going to go into the field, the finger points up. Anytime the scalpel is going to go into the field, the finger points to the ceiling, so it is nowhere near the scalpel. The scalpel and the finger never coexist in the same space. So if finger's down, scalpel's away. If scalpel is going to come in, finger goes up. I'm going to make a vertical cut about inch and a half, and now I'm going to repalpate. Okay, I know where I want to go here. I could feel enough that I'm right down to membrane. So at this point, finger points to the ceiling, puncture in, pull all the way towards me, 180 degree rotation, all the way away. Scalpel comes out before the finger goes down. Nothing's disappearing here. Now finger, feel all the way down until the posterior wall of the cricothyroid, and it can, so my incision is big enough. Bougie comes in, bougie slides, behind the pad of the finger, because the pad's the most sensitive part of your finger. You're feeling the bougie go underneath the pad of your finger. That's the move, is bougie comes in behind the finger. Okay, I'm feeling it past the pad, and now I, bougie's in, I could get my finger out of there. And now I could re-grip, put on my crike. And wiggle it in until it reaches its end point. Bag, confirm with end title, secure, inflate, all's good in the world.